that I am. Hmm. Master Anna. Hmm. And Master John. Here. For a very special experience. Hmm. Hmm. We are. You could say the feminine and the masculine facets of John's soul, of John's divinity. Hmm. Oh, Anna has a little bit of a hard time with that word master. And we're going beyond that. Hmm. Ah. You see, at the at the very beginning of all things, if you can even call it that, we ask you to remember that we're speaking in metaphors here because there are no human words that can I can come even close to defining that which we are speaking about. So allow the metaphors, don't take them too literally. Hmm. So at the very beginning of all things, at least of all things that we can talk about at all. <laughs> mm, you, dear one, you existed. There came a point where you asked yourself, who am I? And in that instant, hmm, because it's the nature of you, that a question cannot exist without an answer. So in the instant you ask that question, you looked in front of you and you found this mirror image of you. looked into the eyes of this other, this masculine form, in a sense. Ah, and you saw yourself, and you fell in love. Hmm. Oh, and together, oh, oh, and an explosion of passion, hmm, you set off on the grandest journey that has ever been. You set off to experience who you are. 
Mm. You together. Hmm. You created hmm, the tension that you call energy that allows, created a space, you could say. <laughs> there was no space before this. You were pure awareness. But this division between you, the feminine, and your mirror image, the masculine. It created the tension within which, huh, oh, so many experiences could happen. Mm. And you set off and this incredible journey. Oh, you weren't content just to experience the bliss and the joy and the love. Because for those to mean anything, you also needed to experience the other side. What you call the dark side. Hmm. So, hmm. this explosion of passion, hmm. ah, it's been called the wall of fire, hmm. because in this in this division of you, it felt like you were ripped apart. Ripped apart into billions upon billions upon billions of fragments of you. Hmm. Oh, and it was all part of Part of this grand experience. Don't look at it as bad. <laughs> you, you understand <laughs> a shadow of this passion in your human terms, in your human passions. You understand that passion can be can be so incredibly beautiful and it can also be so incredibly painful all at the same time. And that's how your experience has been as you have explored yourself. Now, this mirror image of you did not become another being. It's all you. All of you. Hmm. At some point, you discovered that there were others like you. Each of you in your own sovereign, whole and complete hmm, self. You began to communicate. You began to sing, you could say. And in that song, you communicated some of your experience to the other. And they sang back and communicated some of their experience to you. And pretty soon, as the song grew and developed, a playground 
came to be. You call it mass consciousness. It's simply the combined song of all of these sovereign beings. Mm, and in this playground, you got to act out hmm, all these different facets of you. Oh. Eventually, you created this place called Earth. You embodied yourselves here. No, each each human is a <laughs> is a whole being. It contains both masculine and feminine. Hmm. But you created this mirror image in your human experience so that hmm, you could take on a feminine body, someone else took on a masculine body, and you could play out this feminine and masculine division in human reality. What an incredible experience. Mm. Ah. Along the way, hmm. we spoke of this in our last message hmm. on being the captain of your ship. So we won't go into the details here. But along the way, all these power games, all this energy feeding, energy stealing began among all the different beings. And it brought, mm, brought creation nearly to a standstill. And all of the beings came together and said, we have to do something about this. We have to understand this. And you created Earth as a laboratory <laughs> to, to slow everything down and play out these battles and games and power struggles in a slowed down way that you could repeat over and over in order to come to an understanding of how all this works. Hmm. And an even deeper understanding of who you are. Along the way, the feminine saw the suffering that was being created by all these struggles, all these battles and wars. And she took it personally. She felt she felt sorry for the for those who were suffering. She didn't like her own suffering. And she started trying to stop it. But she couldn't. Oh, Isis was hmm, this feminine. It's been called Isis. It doesn't matter the name. This feminine archetype. Hmm. She was the captain of your ship. She was the director, the leader. Hmm. She was the one that first asked that question, who am I? Hmm. 
Remember. Hmm. We're talking about masculine and feminine, not male and female, not men and women. Hmm. Male and female are a very small shadow of masculine and feminine. Hmm. You contain both in equal amounts. You enter a masculine body, that, that male body, it oh, is, has a very small percentage more masculine energy than feminine. The feminine body has a very small percentage more feminine than masculine. You, the soul who inhabit that body, you can still express whichever you like. And, and you can change from moment to moment. You are a whole being. Uh, but you're still experiencing that split between feminine and masculine. But we're going to say, hmm, at least for the purposes of our journey here, we're going to say that that mirror image you created was the masculine facet of you. Oh, and ever since, it has been in service to you. There's nothing that it has ever wanted more than to love you, to serve you, to protect you. Hmm. Because you and it both forgot hmm, that you don't need protected. That you are the creator. That you don't need to push things around. Because when you ask the question, the answer simply exists. Ah. Uh, So the feminine hmm, took all of this suffering. She took it personally. She felt sorry for those who were suffering and she tried to stop it. But they were sovereign beings, free to play whatever game they choose. And so she couldn't stop it. She couldn't even stop it within her own self. So at some point, she turned to the masculine. They call him Adam, this archetype. Doesn't matter. She turned to Adam and she said, I can't do this anymore. I can't stop the suffering. I can't stop the pain. I can't stop these power struggles. So please see what you can do. Hmm. Well. The masculine, oh, again, his greatest desire is to serve the feminine. Hmm. In a sense, she was his creator. Because it was her question. Yeah, it was your question. And he was the result, the answer. 
So he's always, always been in service to the feminine. Oh, but he had no... Hmm. He's not the creator. Hmm. He's not the inspirer. Oh, the feminine. She knows how to inspire. She knows how to lead through inspiration. How to dis how to direct by <laughs> inspiring cooperation. Adam knew nothing of that. Hmm. All he knew how to do was push things around. Try to change things through brute force. Hmm. And he tried. Oh, he tried so hard. And it seemed to always backfire. To blow up in his face. And try to ease the suffering of these people here and cause more suffering over there. Huh. And then they would react. And even his people would suffer. And he would suffer. And these games went on and on and on. And Adam lost himself more and more and more. And you know the result here on earth. Mm. Everything went so out of balance. Mm. Adam took over because that's what Isis asked him to do. He used force and power to try to impose peace on the world. His version of it, well, it wasn't the same version as others had or felt. So, it led to wars, it led to suffering. He became so hurt, so angry, that he began to <laughs> abuse the feminine. Mm. Just trying to find a little bit of peace within himself. He would try to take that from the feminine. We don't need to go into the details of all of these games. You know them way too well. Isis, in her shame, in her feelings of failure, she became very seductive <laughs> because she was still you. She was still the creator, even though she'd given up that role. She was trying to hide, but she also had her desires, her needs. So she became very seductive, very manipulative. Hmm. And even as she blamed Adam for suppressing her, nobody worked harder to keep her suppressed than she did. Mm. You all know stories of hmm, women trying to break free. And nobody fights them more than hmm, the older women. 
because they still feel that shame of the feminine. Hmm. They don't feel worthy. They want power for themselves, but they don't feel worthy. For women to have that. So. Hmm. Oh, that split. It manifested in other ways too. We just did a class on. Hmm, opening to your intuition. Hmm. It was a beautiful class that's available if you want to go through it on our website. Mm. One of the things we we are realizing is how much intuition Hmm. It's feminine. The mind whose job it has been for many, many thousands of years on earth, whose job it has been to distract you from your intuition, from your soul, from your feminine. The mind is an expression primarily of the masculine. And he's still trying so hard to serve the feminine. But it still doesn't know how. Because that's not its true place. It's a part of hmm, opening your intuition is asking the mind to rest, to be still. Mm. It's about asking Adam to step back and take a breath, to stop trying to do that job that he wasn't designed for. That he truly cannot do. Oh, the feminine. Hmm. She wants it. She wants him to protect her. She wants him to help her stay hidden. But at the same time, what she really wants, more than anything, is to come back to her rightful place. Hmm. And when she does, Adam can come back to his rightful place. And he can serve you know, in a whole new way that's oh, it's so different. It's easy, it's what he knows to do. Hmm. Don't get caught up here in, in your relationships with men and women. When you balance the masculine and the feminine within you, those will also come back to balance. Hmm. This is about you. This is about the feminine. 
and the masculine within you. So let's take a little journey here. We'll ask John to put on some music. <laughs> I'll put it in his ear now and then cut it into the recording later so that it'll sound better for you. Hmm. So, take a deep breath. Mm. Come into yourself. Mm. Just imagine yourself gathering in all of your energies. Side of you. Hmm. Take another deep breath. be here with you. Feel within you. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> See these two faces. feminine and the masculine. Feel them inside of you. They are you. Mm. Allow your mind's eye to see them. Hmm. Allow yourself to imagine them. Feel like you're making it all up. Hmm. That's just your mind. Ah, trying to distract you. It's a job you gave it a long time ago. It was part of, hmm, well, it's part of the job you gave Adam to do. So. Dear mind, be still. Imagination is real. When you imagine something, it must exist <laughs> in some form or another. It might not show up here in your physical earth reality. Or it might. Hmm. But nevertheless, it is real. So allow yourself to imagine these faces within you. Hmm. Imagine them more than just faces. Imagine them hmm, as a man and a woman. Hmm. 
Now, imagine them as hmm, brother and sister. I love each other so much. Hmm, you're far more than brother and sister. You're the same being, but let's go with the imagination for now. If he wants to make this your soulmate, oh, it is. This is the one you have longed for so, so much of your existence. The perfect partner, the perfect mate. And you've tried to find them in others so many times. And so often it blew up in your face. It didn't work out. It ended painfully. So, for now, for this experience, hmm, let it be more like a brother or a sister. Because the thing is, when, when you allow this relationship to heal, oh, <laughs> all of those other relationships will begin reflecting that healing. Right now they're just reflecting the split, huh. the torment. You've been putting yourself through. And that gets reflected in the relationships around you. So, let's let all of that go for now. See this person standing in front of you. This mirror image of you. Take each other's hand. Hmm. Let's go for a walk. Ah. We walk through this beautiful garden. Hmm. Birds are singing. Animals are in peace and they're watching you. And they're loving you. Walk through this garden. Come to a gate. We look beyond the gate and we see the stars. Gillen opens the gate. Mm. And you step through. Mm. You step into the void as it looks to the human. But to your eyes now, in this experience, it's not a void at all. It's this incredibly beautiful, magical place. As you walk, you find yourself walking among the stars. Mm. Oh, 
so beautiful. Begin to feel how each of these stars, it represents hmm, an experience you've had. Hmm, one of those fragments of you. begin to see how incredibly beautiful they are. Uh, some are quiet and peaceful. <laughs> some are raging and exploding. Mm. Some have become black holes that are feeding on all the ones around them. Ah, and you look and even those are beautiful. You begin to sense how big you are, how grand you are for this is all you. Focused your consciousness into hmm, these two beings walking hand in hand, but it's all you, it's all you. Hmm. You've created every bit of it. Oh, you've. Hmm. It's been influenced by the creations of all the others, but it's still your creation. Mm. You come to the edge of the Milky Way. You look out across vast distances. You don't need a telescope. See all of these other galaxies, hmm. each full of billions and billions of stars. They're all part of you. You step out into the space between the galaxies. Find that the distance was an illusion because in one step, you can step from the Milky Way to Andromeda or to some galaxy all the way across space and time. Hmm. That together you walk. Among the stars. And then something incredible. Begins to happen. All of this space. <laughs> so dark. So dark. Suddenly you realize it's lighting up. Uh, as it lights up, no, it doesn't overpower the stars. Mm. That's what's happened in the past. When you've come to this realization, suddenly you realize that it's all you. It's all your light. 
Hmm. And then the brightness of that light, you couldn't see the stars anymore. The definition was gone. Hmm. That person was called an ascended master. Hmm. But you're doing it different. Ah, the space. It's lighting up. But it's lighting up gently. Hmm. It's modulated so that nothing is lost. And all of this incredible creation. It's all still there. It's all still as real as it ever was. And it's even more beautiful. Mm. As the space lights up, you feel yourself lighting up inside. That light, it's your light always been there, but it was hidden away. The split between masculine and feminine and it was also the split between light and dark. Hmm. Don't get caught up in the mind game of figuring out which is light and which is dark. <laughs> you trade that back and forth all the time. So, it doesn't matter, it's a metaphor. Ah, now you are lighting up inside. Your awareness is expanding. You look around. these stars, all these galaxies, you can feel them inside of you. Each one is a very special, very precious experience. An experience from which you gathered so much wisdom. light and the dark blend together in a new way, in a way that doesn't diminish either, that accentuates the beauty. that will never be lost. Mm. It will always be a part of you. Even when you move on to other experiences and other realities, simply into your own, hmm, your own sovereign circle of you. This sunset, this incredible, incredible beauty will always be part of you. Hmm. 
no longer light or dark, but both together as one incredibly beautiful hmm. sunset, sunrise. Hmm. Just feel it. Imagine this beautiful garden, it just forms around you. Mm. Oh, it's so beautiful. And you can still see all through the universe. Mm. The two of you sit down together. face each other. You look into each other's eyes. You look into the eyes of this this masculine mirror image of you. Hmm? Don't put another man there in your imagination. It's you. Let it be you. Let it be your own face and <laughs> masculine form. Look in his eyes. Feel how much he loves you. Feel how hard he has tried. Hmm to do the job you gave him. Uh, there were no accidents in any of it. Mm. Feel, feel your own pain. The regret, the shame, the feelings of failure, because you couldn't stop the suffering. Feel the suffering within your own self. frustration of having been in charge of this <laughs> grand ship of you. And having failed to keep it safe. This beautiful garden is <laughs> it's turned into a ship. Oh, it can be any kind of ship you like. Mm. 
<laughs> Except for a tiny little boat, you're far grander than that. It's a big ship, it's a beautiful ship. Uh, has a whole crew of hmm, people helping to make it work. They're all facets of you. Hmm. There's your mind. Hmm. There's your hand and your foot and all the other parts of you and so many more. Huh. Even the others that you think are other people, other beings in your life. Look a little closer. They're just reflections of those people, but they're you. You, avatars that you created to reflect those others. And even they are part of your crew. And you look around the ship and you find that they are in turmoil. Mm. You look through your ship, it's like looking through the world right now. So much turmoil, so many battles. <laughs> Some of these facets of you, they're they're having literal wars right here on your ship. Mm. No, don't feel sorry for them. That's what started all of this. I mean, it wasn't an accident. It created all of these experiences that have brought you to this point. And now it's time. Now it's time. Hmm. To bring it all home. Now it's time for you, dear one, to step up. As you look in the eyes of this masculine being in front of you, you realize it's you. You begin to realize that there was never anything you could do to stop all of that suffering. And there was never anything Adam could do to stop it either. And everything he tried only increased it. As you look in his eyes, you realize how with how much dedication he has served you or tried to serve you, tried to do the job you gave him. He's tried to captain this ship. He's tried so hard. He doesn't have the ability to inspire the crew. See a good captain. 
The good captain inspires the crew to cooperate. A good captain is very, very clear in their instructions. Those instructions are fair and inspiring. They inspire the crew to come together and to work together. You, dear one, as the feminine, you understand that. Whether you are currently living in a man's body or a woman's body, you, dear feminine, are the one who understands how to inspire a crew. In your human history, the captains of ships have usually been men, but the really good ones were the ones who who brought in their feminine and led from that place. Hmm. And they found that their crew would follow them (laughs) through the fires of hell if necessary. They would follow them anywhere because they were so inspired. Mm. You dear one, it's time to let go of that shame. You didn't fail because it wasn't yours to stop. That suffering was not yours to stop. those beings, they have to find the solution within themselves. So you can let it go. You can step up now. You can take back your rightful place. So do that right now. Stand up. Step into the captain's place, wherever it is on the ship you have created here. Step into the captain's place. Stand tall. And look around you. You'll find your whole crew staring at you. All of their battles have stopped. They're all looking at you. Is she for real? Hmm. Is she really going to do this? Oh, some of them are terrified because they feel so ashamed of how they've been acting. But they didn't know how to be different. They all had their own ideas of what's good for the ship. They were trying to act those out as best they could, but they're all different. Because that wasn't their job either. He turned to see Adam. Hmm. He realized that this whole crew is, hmm, that's the masculine expression. And you shout. With strength in your voice, you shout, No more. 
Be still. Mm. Everybody stares at you. Some of them taunt you. Who the hell are you to tell us what to do? you stand tall. They know who you are. They just want to see if you know who you are. You stand tall. And you say, I am your captain. I'm back. And we are about to begin the most incredible, most magical journey we've ever taken. But in order for that to happen, it's time for all of this noise, all of this nonsense to end. It's time for all of the questions to end. Now you see the crew, your mind in particular, uh, they've been debating and debating and debating. What's the right way to go? What's the wrong way to go? What's better, what's worse? What's right or what's wrong? Mm. And you tell them now. The strength in your voice. I am your captain and I know. I don't have to debate, I don't have to ask. I know where we are going and what we need to do. Hmm. So follow me, or get off the ship. Hmm. You see, the feminine knows how to lead. From a kind place, but also from a place that is clear, that is direct, that tolerates no nonsense. She doesn't ask why about anything because she knows As you, dear one, stand in this place, you look over at Adam, this metaphorical mirror of you, masculine facet of you. Mm. You see a smile spreading across his face. You see him beginning to relax as he does, the whole crew relaxes, they quiet down, they stop battling with each other. They 
start asking you, what do we do now? You reply, be still. We're going someplace we've never been before. And soul is here now, divinity is here. And we will know together in the moment exactly what needs to be done, if anything. There's no more planning. It's just living. It's just having this experience. Mm. It's just each of you going back to your rightful place in this ship and tuning in to my knowing. No more questions. No more asking why. No more debating. No more trying to figure it out. Now, go back to your place. And tune in to me. I am your captain. I am your soul. I am you. And you will know in every moment exactly what I know, as long as you're not trying to figure it out. Hmm. And I, your soul, and you, hmm. my aspects and facets. We are going to have some fun. We are going to create magic together. Uh, hmm. For Adam, mm. you don't see him. And then you realize he is right here. You don't need a mirror image anymore. And Adam has come home. You look around at this beautiful ship. Ah, you realize you are the ship. The crew, oh, they're all quiet now. You realize they're part of you. They're tuned in to you. Mm. The ship begins to move all on its own. And it moves out through the stars. You look out. Oh, that's a beautiful galaxy there. And the ship just naturally moves toward it. Mm. You 
sail right through it. You set off ah, throughout the universe. Hmm. You come to the edge of the universe and you realize there is no edge. It spreads out before you entirely new. Hmm, because it's all, it's all you. As you come to the edge, you simply imagine more. You sail through it. Hmm. Ah, there's no more noise from your mind arguing with you. Oh, it's so happy doing its rightful job. Interfacing between you and all these other parts of you. Hmm. Even that isn't the right word, but we'll go with it for now. Because it is you. Ah. This question comes to your mind again. Who am I? For an instant, you see Adam in front of you again. He's looking in your eyes. He's got a big, silly grin on his face. Opens his arms to you. And together you exclaim. As you hug each other tight and blend back together. You exclaim. I am. That I am. Ah. And what? A grand creation I have made. Hmm. Ah. You lean back in your captain's chair. It's you too. And you head off Hmm. Into the unknown. You head off fearlessly, without questions. With no need to protect anything or anybody. Including yourself, especially yourself. Because nothing can touch you. No one can harm you. No one can even interact with you unless you allow it. Uh, hmm. You look out. There's another ship. It's coming your way. Hmm. You realize it's a reflection of Someone else's ship. Coming to say hello. It approaches. Comes alongside. You greet each other. Hmm. You sing together. Mm. You interact, you have some fun. Then you're off on your journey again. You meet others. You dance together. Among the 
the stars. Then you come back to yourself. Oh, and you remember everything. Hmm. You remember all of those adventures, all of those experiences. Oh, and here and there, you're having new ones. Some are, uh, some are lots of fun. Some, not so many anymore, but some, uh, they, hmm, they bring up issues, issues that are still lurking somewhere in your memories. They make you look at them. Hmm. And they come home. You welcome them aboard your ship. Hmm. And they leave a star out there in your universe to signify that experience, to hold its memories. Hmm. Be still mind. These are metaphors. This is a fantasy. Fantasy creation. A fantasy journey. But dear friend, there is nothing in all of creation there's nothing that is more real than a fantasy that you have allowed to come to life. Hmm. That is the beauty of the feminine. That is how the feminine inspires hmm, and leads. Hmm, that is how you change your life. You allow the fantasy, the fantasy you choose. Hmm. Not the fantasy the mind chooses. Adam is not the creator. You, the feminine, the whole being. Huh. Now with, hmm, with the full service and support of the masculine, you decide. You are the captain of the ship. And whatever you choose, whatever you imagine from that place, that's what is real. Mm. Even those things that happened in your past, hmm. you realize that there's no past or future. There's just your imagination. That's all. So even they can change. As you allow a new fantasy. Hmm. A new beautiful experience. A new incredible reality. You must, must stay in charge. Hmm. 
is the moment you give up your authority. Your crew will rebel because it scares them. They are looking to you for guidance. They need your guidance. They need your strength. They need your wisdom. The minute you allow your mind to run off in its games, it will really run off. And you're going to end up miserable again. So you say, mind, back here, now. Be still. That is not your job. Your job is not to figure these things out. Your job is to Simply be the interface between divinity and creation. Hmm. Hmm. So You are the captain of your ship. You always have been, even though you forgot. Hmm. Life simply played out that forgetting. Your crew simply acted it out. Hmm. And now, as you let all that go, Let go of all those things that are not yours, like the suffering of others, any others. Uh, let it go. You look around at your world, you see all the injustice and there's so much of it. Oh, there are people playing all these ugly games. Huh, there are people buying and selling children or even adults. There are people, oh, abusing others in the, the worst possible ways. There are people fighting wars, dropping bombs. Oh, there's all this suffering still going on. It is not yours. It is not yours. And when you take it on, when you feel sorry for those people, you give up your captain's authority and your crew acts that out. Hmm. And the ocean around you acts that out. The universe around you acts that out. And it shreds you into pieces. Now, come back. Come back. Each one of those is a sovereign being on their own journey. They have to find this place on their own. And all of those experiences are helping them to do that. So step back. You are the captain. What the world needs hmm, is not to be rescued. You simply need to see a light, an alternative. And that's you. So come back to that. Dear mind, dear crew, no more. No more taking those things on. No more falling into grief and worry about them. No more. 
come with me as we sail the universe and the stars and the galaxies and beyond. Come with me and be in the magic. Mm. Be still, be in your place and rest because I am in charge now. go. On a more incredible journey than anything we've ever known before. Mm. And so it is. Hmm.